Live is the coolest program on earth for all ages. It is so sarcastic and funny. Get it now at the Chess Superstore. Get Hi, I'm Fritz Ron Henley, Five. and welcome to today's show. We're very fortunate to have with us today one of America's youngest, brightest female talents, Arena Crush. In tournament play, Arena has already defeated several senior masters. Arena, welcome to today's show. It's a pleasure to be here, Ron. So, Arena, we're going to look today at your game with Leite from the uh, this 1996 New, the York, New York Open. Open. And uh, what was the situation under which this game was played? This was the first rounds of the New York Open. Um, the time control was one hour per game. And I was very happy with my results, obviously. It was a nice game. I had a very nice attack on his king. So you played white, you played d4. You always played d4? Always. My favorite move. And he responded with the Nimzo Indian? Mm-hmm. e6, knight c3, bishop b4. Now you played queen c2, the classical variation. Yes, I did. And your opponent responded with b6. And yeah. you said you didn't like this move so much. No. B6 showed that black was not going to oppose me building up my center at all. Um, and I played knight f3. I could have um, conquered the center with an immediate e4 instead of um, knight f3, which would have contradicted his b6. But I chose a quieter move. and So after knight f3, bishop b7. Mm-hmm. Bishop, Bishop G5. G5. Now you actually transpose to kind of a Leningrad formation. Mm -hmm. uh, and so this is actually very uh, dangerous for black. You're able to build up your center and build some attack. G5 castles. E3. D6. Bishop D3. And now your opponent gave up the bishops and you took with the pawn. Mm-hmm. So now, because you have this threat to play bishop takes pawn check, your opponent played h6. Okay. Mm -hmm. But h6, on the other hand, it also weakens his king side, right? Yeah, that showed up in the end of the game. So now you retreated your bishop with bishop h4. He played knight d7. I castled. And he played e5, trying to get some activity in the center. Mm -hmm. Now here you played bishop f5. Bishop f5. Now I threaten bishop takes d7. Queen takes d7, right? Mm-hmm. And I just can play bishop takes f6, ruining his pawn structure, and then his king is going to be under attack. Okay. So he can't allow that. Mm-hmm. He defended against that with queen e8. And now you play knight d2. What's the idea with knight d2? Um, I wanted to um, play in the center and on the king's side. I was thinking of rook e1 and f3 to play maybe um, e4 or f4, putting pressure on the e5 pawn. Okay. Also, by playing your knight back, you avoid the possibility of him exchanging and weakening your king's side as mm -hmm. well, right? Yeah. So after knight d2, he played g6. I guess... He feels he has to do something to get out from under the pressure of these bishops. Yeah, I couldn't retreat to h3 because I didn't like that because of g5. Bishop g3. And g4, capturing my bishop. That would be a nasty surprise. It would. Okay. So I played back to d3, just take, and then later on I took advantage of the g6 weaknesses that he made. So now he played king g7 to try and bolster his position. Mm -hmm. And you played rook at 80e1. This is part of your plan, as you were saying. Mm -hmm. You want to expand with the f-pawn. And now he played knight h5. I took advantage of that move with an immediate f4. I was planning um, f5 next move. Followed by maybe g4 and maybe. just continuing after him. Mm -hmm. So now he has to do something here. Mm -hmm. So he tried to block you with f5. f5. Well, now that I couldn't carry out my f5 plan... I played h3, and so I was choosing another strategy, namely a breakthrough with g4. Okay, and after if you play g4, of course, if he takes, you can take, and then you open up this diagonal as well. Yeah, for my bishops, that was one of my advantages, having two bishops against his knight and bishop. I have to say, I really like the white, white formation. You've totally masked everything in the center. Okay, so after h3, now he played e4 to block up the position. 
I can't say I particularly like this move, although I don't see um, a better alternative for him. The drawback of this move is that he closes up the center and allows me to concentrate on what, I've, um, on what I already intended to do in the first place, g4. Well, maybe it would have been a little better for him to try and play queen f7 and bring his other rook over to the center and mm -hmm. then try to exchange and keep the center a little more blocked, you know. But after e4, like you said, you played bishop, bishop e2. e2. Now you're already preparing to play g4. g4. So he played queen e6. I, d I played king h2 because I didn't feel the need to rush here. I took my time preparing g4 because there's nothing he can do to stop it. King h8 he played? Mm-hmm. And now you go ahead and play g4. g4. So, of course, he has to retreat, right? Mm -hmm. Knight back to f6. And now you went ahead and exchanged immediately. Pawn takes pawn. Pawn takes pawn. And this opens the g file for you. I followed with rook g1. Okay, so you immediately have the threat to come in with rook to g6, right? Mm -hmm. So he played rook to g8 to oppose you. And now here you played a very interesting move. You played knight to b3. Mm -hmm. The idea with, of this move was to play d5 and knight d4, um, intruding on these squares, attacking the f5 pawn. He misinterpreted this move and played a5. I guess he thought maybe the idea of this move was to play c5. c5. So pro probably he should have played c5 right, himself. Right, that's right. Obviously I'm better here, but it would have forestalled his death for a little while longer. Okay. So in the game, he played a5, and uh, now you went ahead and just followed through with your plan, right? That's right. d5. d5. So he has to move his queen. f7. And now you went ahead and played knight, knight d4. d4. And now why is this move so strong? First of all, it attacks the f5 pawn. It threatens knight e6 also attacking the c7 pawn, and there's really nothing he can do to save his position at this point. Okay, so in the game, he played, first he wants to defend this attack, right? So he played knight back to h7. Yeah, um, I was looking after the game if he would have played knight e8. Then I play knight e6. Um, if he would have tried playing knight c5 here, I play queen d1. And now if he takes, for example. Pawn takes? Oh. Um, I was looking at bishop h5 first. Okay. Now he has to retreat to... Say d7? Mm-hmm. Take care first. Okay, rook takes. He has to take with the king, right? Mm-hmm. Take. Queen takes here, for example? Mm-hmm. Rook g1. And you have a very, very strong attack here. That's right. Queen d4 is coming next. And, and no matter which way he goes with his king, queen d4. And then yeah, I mean, if he him. plays king h8, I have queen d4 check. And if he plays king h7, and you have, have bishop g6. Mm -hmm. So in the game, he played knight h7. And I played knight e6, attacking c7 pawn. Now, we were discussing the other idea was that instead of knight e6, uh, I believe you mentioned to me the idea of queen, queen to d1. d1. Is also possible. And then the threat there would be to play bishop h5 or knight, knight, knight e6, e6 followed by queen d4. Right, this would have, um, it would have made the threat a little less obvious to see because now I have this here and um, it would have made it harder for him to see that right away. And I think the other possibility is that you have bishop h5 and he can't stop that by putting a knight on f6 without losing his f5, f5 pawn. pawn. This is what we're discussing. But in the game, after knight h7, he played knight c5, or sorry, in the game, he played knight e6 immediately. So now he challenged your knight. And now you played queen d1. This is a very nice move. And what's the point of queen d1? Well, first of all, he can take on e6 because I take. He takes and queen d4. And I also threaten bishop h5 at any moment, um, putting my bishop into play here. Okay, so in the game, he played knight f8. Mm -hmm. And so now you hit him with bishop h5. Mm -hmm. So he went queen d7. And now queen d4 check. So he only had one move left for his king, which is here. I guess that was his idea with knight back, was to give us square, square for his for his king. king. But unfortunately, 
his knight back also disconnected his rooks, right? Which he now take advantage of with rook takes rook. And so the logical thing here would be for him to play king takes rook, right? Although but, it's lost anyway, even if he does that. Um, I just check. And where can he go? You're going to play something to g7 check next anyway, right? Yeah, um, I take, first of all, knight takes f8, rook takes, and bishop g6. With the mate coming very soon. Okay. An immediate accident, right? Yeah, he was in time pressure and he missed um, this move he took. And I kind of mated him on h8. And what did he say after this happened? I missed that, <laughs> basically. Mm -hmm. We'll look at with Arena is a game where she's white against Benin. Uh, this was played in the Marshall Chess Club uh, Arena. In March 97, yeah.